um I never have done anything like this but I feel very I feel propelled to give my voice along with the million and one voices who are screaming and who are crying about the injustice that is happening in our community um yesterday <clears throat> as many of you have I, I watched the video of Alton Sterling and uh his wife and his oldest son his 15 year old son and like many of you I'm sure it it brought me to tears it was very difficult to watch and not even 24 hours later <laughs> does another video surface um, <laughs> but this time it was taken by a woman who watched her husband killed over a busted tail light shot four times I believe I heard it on the news, but I could not bring myself to watch another video. Um, it was enough when this happened to Trayvon Martin. It was enough when this happened to Eric Gardner. It was enough when this happened to Tamir Rice. It was enough when it happened to Walter Scott. But now we have Alton Sterling, if Orlando Castle, I believe his name is. And I am very angry at not only the cops who in a way, find themselves to justify these types of actions, but in a system who seems to allow them to get away with it. I am upset that most of us who look at it from the sidelines and just say, oh, that's too bad, who happen to be African American or minority and thinks in their mind that this possibly could not happen to them poor them not us that we are us we are these families who have to bear the burden of these men and women who are being unrighteously killed by cops whose salary we pay for i have a husband and I am carrying our first son. And as much joy and happiness I have in my heart for this creature <laughs> who moves inside me, who grows inside of me, I am afraid for his life and he's not even physically here yet my husband does not have a record never been in trouble does that matter when he walks out the door and when I'm watching that press conference yesterday by Alton's wife I can't help but to put myself in that position someday Will I have to explain to our little son why his father was unjustly murdered? How do you live with that? What do you do with that? Or if it's my son... Do I put myself in the position of Michael Brown's mother 
and weep for her child who was going to college, who was just coming out of the store. It's too much. It's just too much. And I <laughs> am not, oh shoot, a prominent figure in society. I don't have millions of dollars. I'm no celebrity in any of that regard. I have no power or influence rather. <sighs> so the best I can do is just share my tears and to join my voice with the millions of voices out there who are hurting because of this consistent injustice that continues to happen and people continue to get away with it. So, I don't know <laughs> if anyone's even gonna watch this. I don't know how widespread this video will be. What I'm hoping is that it evokes emotions. Get out of your damn phones. Stop checking your Facebook news feeds and running through Twitter and Instagram and stay out of your DMs and wake up and look what's in front of you for just a minute. This shit is real. It's happening. And you are a fool if you think that this can't touch you. It can. It absolutely can. But the best way that we could prevent it is if we actually do something. I don't know what those steps are. I can't tell you what those steps are. But what I can tell you is that I'm down. <laughs> I'm ready for whatever march we have to do for the protection of my son and my husband or any children that we continue to may have I have to do what's in their best interest and what's in their best interest is just to not say well we're just going to move to a secluded area it's not just to say we're going to move to Canada or whatever or whatever whatever that isn't helping it's just escaping the problem I still have three brothers here I still have cousins here I have family here who I still worry about because of this constant thing and as African Americans I'm not going to put it as poetic as the wonderful Jesse Williams did about a week or two ago get your nose out your asses and wake up and realize this is what's happening you no know, we put the put the guns and 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 the and the crime on one another aside because <laughs> We have a bigger enemy to fight, and that's just the system. Women, stop portraying or parading yourselves out here to be the bomb-ass bitch or some ratchet-ass hood rat. That's not even stellar of you to even portray yourself as. When it comes to these African-American men, teach and raise your sons. To be better, to do better, even if you don't know what that looks like. Men, stop teaching your sons how to provoke the police. You see what's happening. And as much as I feel like some police officers should be provoked, now is not a time to do any of that. So to the wives, girlfriends, and mothers who have gone through anything like this, I am sorry. I cry for you. And my heart bleeds for you. I lost a son 10 years ago, about 10 years ago. And it was nothing to this. He was a baby, but that pain never leaves you. And I can only imagine what that pain is like when you lose a child to someone by someone else. I can only imagine. And I'm sorry. We had 102 innocent, <laughs> innocent, <laughs> uh, Black people, women and men, killed last year. That's two a week. 
too that we know about. There's so many we don't even know about. And it has to stop. So I am posting this and I am encouraging whoever you are, whatever your background is, if you are as moved as I am um, and propelled to say something, to post a short video and allow it to be as real as this, I am going to use the hashtag stop killing our men from a woman's perspective. And if you are a woman, I encourage you to use the same. If you're a man, I encourage you to use the same. And let's see what response we'll get. I may not be able to do much, uh, but I can at least allow my voice to be heard and join the millions of people out there who are actually physically out there fighting for justice. I can allow for my voice and my presence to be a part of that movement. So please be safe. Please be careful. And I don't even know if that's enough. But I'm going to tell you anyway, to be careful and to be safe. And to the men, go home to your wives at the end of the day and your children. The fight that my grandparents started that I've heard so many stories about. And my great grandfather, what he has gone through in World War II. And my grandfather in the Vietnam War. I cannot allow my voice to not be heard in the wake of their struggles, in the wake of their tribulations, in the wake of their injustice that they experienced themselves. I am Nicole Von Nared, Washington, and I am not going to allow their pain, their struggles, their marches to become in vain by ignoring it. The fight continues, and I hope that you guys get it. And you know that we got to keep going. It's going to be up to us to hopefully finish what they started. Thanks.